Before the century turned, the most notorious family feud in American history would send images of violent, backward mountain men roaring across the newspaper headlines of America. The famous feud took place in the remote valley of the Tug River, which divided Kentucky from the newly formed state of West Virginia. On the West Virginia side of the river lived a family named Hatfield, across from a Kentucky family named McCoy. The Hatfield-McCoy feud really wasn't a feud, it was simply a conflict. It had much more to do with the uh, political and economic changes that were occurring in central Appalachia at that time than it had to do with the folk culture of the region or any of the traditional stories associated with it. The family patriarchs were Randolph McCoy, known as Old Rannell, and Anderson Hatfield. Anderson Hatfield was a man born to star in his own drama. In the Civil War, he had led a group of Confederate guerrillas known as the Logan Wildcats. He was tall and imposing, with looks that earned him the nickname Devil Ants. He did things like go out and get bear cubs and tame them and have them as domestic pets, and uh, he was always known as the best shot in the valley. Hatfield built the most successful timber business in the Tug Valley. McCoy was not as fortunate and bristled for years as his competitor thrived. Then in 1872, Devil Ants won a lawsuit over 5,000 acres of land that belonged to Rannell's cousin, Perry Klein. McCoy was outraged and concluded that Hatfield was a thief, even though the land had been legally won. Klein and the McCoys vowed revenge for the lawsuit. Resentments grew over everything from property to politics. But the outright battles began at an election day celebration in 1882 with an attack on Devil Ance's younger brother, Ellison. Three McCoy brothers got drunk and picked a fight with Ellison Hatfield. They stabbed him. He was a very powerful man. They stabbed him several times. It didn't do any good, so they shot him in the back. And he lingered for three days. Devil Lance said, well, if he dies, I'll kill the McCoy boys. And he kept him in a home over on the West Virginia side up in the hollow there. And they came to him and they said, he's dead. And then Devil Lance sent his people. They went over and they took the McCoy boys and they wrapped him around a pawpaw bush and they killed him. They pleaded for mercy. In September of that year, the Kentucky court issued murder indictments for Devil Lance and 20 of his supporters. No arrests were actually made and things calmed down for a while. But five years later, the feud exploded again. So we have to wonder what happened in those five years. Well, what happened was the state of Kentucky discovered it had very rich coal resources in the Tug Valley, and it wanted to develop those resources. McCoy's cousin, Perry Klein, was now a lawyer in Pikeville, Kentucky, and still furious over losing his land to Devil Lance. In 1887, he convinced the governor to enforce the old indictments against the Hatfields and to extradite them for trial in Kentucky. This time, the Hatfields could not escape the law. Seven of them went to the Kentucky Penitentiary. But somebody had to pay more dearly for the bloody attack, and that was Ellison Mounts, a nephew of Devil Ants. Poor Ellison Mounts, who was probably retarded, he was known as dim-witted or slow in the valley, ended up being the scapegoat, you might say. In February 1890, Allison Mounts went to the scaffold. The feud was over. It had lasted more than a decade, and it left 12 people dead. There are some people that say, well, who won the feud? No one won the feud. The McCoys lost the most. But the Hatfields will be the first to tell you we didn't win. 
We didn't win anything. 